I want to welcome Agile XRM to the podcast. I've known the people at Agile XRM for the past 12 years. I've seen how their business process management tool can add massive value to complex organizational processes in sectors such as finance and government. If you have complex processes or a need for dialogues on the Power Platform or Dynamics 365, take a look at how this BPM tool can add value. You can find them at agilexrm.com or check out the show notes for more details. Welcome to the MVP Show. My intention is that you listen to the stories of these MVP guests and are inspired to become an MVP and bring value to the world through your skills. If you have not checked it out already, I do a YouTube series called How to Become an MVP. The link is in the show notes. With that, let's get on with the show. Today's guest is all the way from France. He received his first MVP award in 2021. He's a big fan of the mountains, loves hikes, treks, and uh, practices running, mountain biking, squash, table tennis, and tennis. He recently decided to commit himself to an ecological transition that is more respectful of the environment, and as such, he is trying to get m- as many people on board as possible. You can find him on Twitter at R3DKAP. Welcome to the show, Emmanuel. Thank you very much, Mark. Nice to be here with you. Yes, yes, yes. How much did I get right or wrong in that introduction? I didn't remember I put all this description. Uh, is it on my MVP profile you found it? Yeah, it, it, not just that. We looked at your website and all Different those places. sorts of things. Yeah. Different places when we do it, do the research. <laughs> Tell us about this ecological transition. What's that all about? Well, um, I don't know if that's how you see it in English, you know, that um, today people are trying to move from an old style, old lifestyle to kind of a new lifestyle. And um, with my wife, we decided if uh, not to to uh, too many years ago, like maybe two two years ago, to um, to do as much effort as we can uh, in order to protect the planet and maybe consume less, uh, and uh, most of all, uh, maybe spread uh, the idea that everybody has to make that effort, so that together we can uh, lower our uh, emission of uh, CO2. And so uh, we uh, have a, a great um, a small company here in France who made a, kind of a kit that uh, people can uh, buy for a, a few bucks and, and then uh, use it. It's like card papers where for transport, uh, food, uh, your uh, the place you live, etc. How much uh, a, a French person uh, in average uh, emits uh, CO2 in one year. And so it's very visual, etc. And so we started presenting that kit to uh, to those cards to friends, to families. And then uh, we started showing it to people from our jobs. And then uh, finally, uh, last uh, month, we had the chance to present it to the people responsible of our city so that uh, we can maybe, you know, influence uh, uh, this all citizens that live around us. Yeah, this is great. This is great. I like it. And, and I know what you mean by that feeling of, you know, lessening your footprint. I've done a similar thing. I've, uh, well, not a similar thing I've, uh, as in I've taken that kind of, and that's why I was interested in, in that ecological transition. You know, I, I saw some of my own water, do rain catchment that's uh, on the property. I try to grow my own vegetables. I've planted about 500 trees in the last year uh, on the property around me. I try to minimize all my, any takeaway waste from the property. So I have a worm farm that eats all the food, all the scraps and things like that. So I, I can understand what you're saying. Yeah, def- definitely um, feel impacted the same way. Yeah, that's the kind of thing we're trying to yeah to 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 go to, and uh, we will probably uh, in the next coming years uh, move a little bit further from the big cities. You know, maybe live a little bit uh, more in the countryside, close to the mountains. Since I really like we really like the mountains, you know. So yeah. <laughs> So, so what's the mountain range that you typically go to? 
Oh, uh, we're uh, here in Toulouse. We're very close to the Pyrenees, and uh, so it's yeah, pretty pretty big mountains here between uh, France and Spain. And um, so we have the I think the highest uh, summit is at uh, a bit more than uh, three thousand meters high. And so uh, we have a lot of uh, ski resorts. So every winter we we try to yeah uh, bring the kids to 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 the ski resorts and um, yeah and a lot of hiking during the summer. Uh, yeah, we really it's, like it's, it. It's a beautiful range. I I actually went over that range when I uh, have you heard of the Camino de Santiago? No. It, st- it starts in France. It's a walk right across the top of France, and you start in France. You take the train to the end of the line to the Pyrenees, and then you climb over the Pyrenees and okay. go right across the top of Spain, and it took 33 days to walk. So walk the entire way. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it was very rough at the top of the mountains. Like the the wind was unbelievable. You could just about uh, yeah. lean right forward, and it would hold you from falling over type thing. It was incredible. Yeah, there, there is a – it's funny that because I discovered it when I arrived here in Toulouse and not – or uh, originated from Toulouse. I lived part of my life in Haute-Savoie, which is close to the Alps on the other side of France. And uh, here in Toulouse, I discovered that there is a, a, a very typical wind which has a name – which, which is called vent d'autant. And when it starts blowing, and then you know it's going to go for three days at least. It's really funny. And it really blows, blows, you know. I mean, <laughs> we just had it this week, and now it's starting to, yeah, to get a, bit, a little bit low. Wow. Wow. So tell us a bit about, you obviously an MVP and in technology. Tell us about your journey into tech. And uh, and even bring us right up to date how you ultimately got into the Microsoft Power Platform side of things. Yeah, well, I'm um, I'm people won't see me through the camera, okay? But uh, I'm pretty old, in fact. Uh, and uh, <laughs> when I was very young, not like true, a, not true, not <laughs> true. Uh, when I was uh, I was I was about fifteen, I discovered um, uh, computers. I mean, it was the first. PC computers, you know, with uh, those gray or orange screens where you have DOS uh, version 2.1. And I mean, I really started at the basics. And um, and then uh, when the years passed, um, well, I, I uh, started doing my studies um, in computer science and then, uh, and then uh, started to work um, as a developer on uh, SAP. And uh, for many years, for about 13 years, I worked uh, as a developer on SAP. Uh, part of those years, for nine years, as a freelancer. And um, at the end of those 13 years, I was in Paris for all these years. Uh, I was working on a on a on a mission on a project uh, at the Conservatoire National des Arts et Métiers, which is a place where it's like a university where people can follow just any course online. Or uh, yeah, and um, and uh, there was a, a project that was mixing SAP with SharePoint. And uh, at that time, uh, well, I, I had been working on SAP for a long time, so I felt like you know a little bit uh, tired of it. And uh, so I jumped to SharePoint on that project. And uh, by the end of the project, I was the SharePoint uh, team manager. And uh, that's how I. Uh, Swapped from uh, SAP to to the Microsoft world, which I didn't know at all. So I just learned, you know, from scratch. And um, and then I started. Uh, I moved to Toulouse in, uh, in twenty. When was that? Twenty twelve. And um, and there I uh, decided to stop being a freelance and just went back into a company, a nice company where I worked on SharePoint uh, on premise first, and then uh, SharePoint Online came along. And um, and then I started to be, you know, I could even say a bit tired of computers. I mean, uh, it's been a lot of years I've been working on with computers, and I was really tired of it. I wanted to change, do something else. I like work, working, so I was wondering maybe I can do another job with, you know, uh, based on working. So I was starting to think about. Uh, going to 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 uh, to uh, attend some uh, some um, how do you say uh, learn you know a new a new job I mean on uh, working on with wood and uh, it's at that time that I discovered Power Apps 
which then allowed me to easily uh, create apps that could see uh, uh, it was like magic on my phone. Uh, because, uh, I mean, at that time, for me, uh, building an app to, to and run it on a phone was really complicated. You needed a lot of knowledge. Uh, and even though I was a developer, I wasn't ready to, to put that energy in, in this kind of development. And uh, being able to just, you know, I mean, take my buttons and drop downs, etc., and just build my screen, put a few formulas, and then a new app would be just working on uh, on your mobile. That was just magical, and I really loved it. And uh, I didn't have any training for it, so I just learned it through the, the official, uh, using the official uh, uh, per app forums. And uh, that's where I learned a lot, of, a lot, uh, like many, many people. And, uh, and then I, I really, it, it looks like, I was just thinking about that today. I was thinking, it's like this, uh, this tool was made for me. I mean, I'm just like, uh, in French, we say like a fish in a pond, just in my place, it's my spot, you know? And uh, so I really, I can twist the tool as I want. I'm really uh, at ease with, uh, with it and I really have fun. And that's what I like about it now. I really have fun using this tool and to create just the apps I want. And it's, it's really this is good. so cool. Yeah. Have you have you ever gone back to look at creating a Power App or a Power Automate over the top of uh, SAP? Uh, what do you mean? I didn't get your question. So, 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 for example, at the moment, I'm working on a project around extending SAP. So using SAP as a system of record and then building power apps on top of SAP data. Oh, yeah. I have, see. have you done this at all? Uh, not yet. I, uh, I haven't, haven't had the chance to, to work on uh, such a project, but uh, it could be interesting because I think that working for many years on SAP, while I still probably have some knowledge still, and uh, it would probably help me to, to build such uh, solutions. Uh, I noticed, of course, the, when the, the, the SAP connector uh, arrived in the Power Platform. And so I said to myself, hmm, that could lead to very interesting projects. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> there seems to be quite a, a demand for extending SAP with Power BI, uh, Power Apps, Power Automate, and uh, Power Virtual Agents. So there. are you know, because there's so many things in SAP that can be quite complicated or not user friendly to build an interface over the top of those SAP assets, I think is becoming attractive to a lot of companies. Yeah, I, I, uh, I totally concur on this. Uh, I mean, I, I, I've been, I, I knew the, how bad the, the, the user experience was on SAP a few few years, well, a lot of years ago, I mean, about 10, 10 to 15 years ago. Uh, today, it, ha it has improved a little bit, but still, it's such a big system that they, they didn't invest too much time, I guess, on the, on the UX. So I understand really the, the fact that uh, using now other uh, third-party solutions that, as, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, per apps and per BI, etc. It's a really interesting solution to extend, uh, yeah, SAP. Mm -mm -mm. So, how did you end up getting nominated, becoming an MVP? What was that process for you? What was that experience for you? Well, uh, <clears throat> as I said, uh, when I started uh, uh, learning about per apps, I uh, just learned from scratch by myself, and I had a lot of help uh, from the community on the the official. Uh, uh, perhaps forums, and uh, so uh, a, a few months later, when I started to be at ease in perhaps, I started myself to help others, and this is uh, uh, this is something uh, that is really part of me. I I really like to uh, to to give the knowledge back to others. Um, it's a very important part of my life and of my time. I take time to uh, if you go to the the, the perhaps. Uh, Forum, there's a gallery of components where you can upload components. If you go to that components page and and then sort it by the the, the best uh, CUDA uh, components, you'll see that there's about I don't know, half of the page. It's my components. I really love to build things for others and and share them with others, etc. And um, so that's I think one of the main uh, 
uh, reason why uh, someone nominated me nominated me for uh, for this uh, MVP title uh, because I gave so much for the community. I was so active and helping others, etc. And still today, yeah. This is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. What, when you come into the program, and of course, we're just a week away from um, MVP Summit. Have you have you done an MVP Summit before? No, my first one. Awesome. I mean, it's going to be like drinking from a fire hose. I just I just filled out my schedule this morning, and for every hour, there's five different things I want to attend. You know, so a lot of options, a lot of options. So so this is going to be a good week next week. Um, what recommendations do you have for other folks that are wondering about the MVP program? Well, yeah, what, what do you recommend to them? Yeah, <clears throat> um, there, there's something I wanted to share with um, with the people who, who listen uh, to this recording. Uh, it's um, a, a few years ago, uh, uh, just when uh, the, the uh, COVID started, you know, to, to show up and uh, and we were restrained at home etc. I started a big project and so I worked so many hours at home and I'm a person who doesn't know when to stop because I'm so passionate. So uh, hours hours went by and I kind of exhausted myself and so um, I, I was so exhausted in the end that I had to stop for a few months and uh, you know just. Um, to rest and uh, and rest my brain as well, uh, which was kind of you know really tired and so I wanted to just leave an advice um, uh, for others. Um, it, it's it, it's really good to have a passion like this, but uh, you really need to uh, be uh, beware and take care of yourself by. Uh, 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 paying real attention to the hours you spend on working, etc. Your brain needs time uh, to to stop. You know, he needs just to stop and do nothing. I really talked to this about someone who said sometimes their, their brain really needs to just stop and do nothing, not even read or look at something, or just maybe go outside and walk, and that's all. You know, not even listening to the radio or anything. Just stop thinking. It's it's a good thing because it needs to rest, not only during the night. So this, I think, this is very important so that you don't, you know, go to a to burn your 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 brains out. And yeah, that's this that's is great. I advice. really wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. Emmanuel, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It was really uh, my pleasure, Mark. Thank you very much for inviting me. Hey, thanks for listening. I'm your host, business application MVP, Mark Smith, otherwise known as the NZ365 Guy. If you like the show and want to be a supporter, check out buymeacoffee.com forward slash NZ365 Guy. Thanks again, and see you next time.